I know, some videos I remember to put the intro, other videos I forget it, whatever. Anyway, as promised, we are continuing to answer old questions that I have been ignoring for years because I'm a jerk. So today's comment is, would love to have a video on how to improve balance, especially on passe. Thank you. Well, assuming that you have not already found your answer from Catherine Morgan or Maria Koreva, who both put out really great videos on how to improve your balance, so like, you could totally watch those. I won't be offended. They do a great job. I did make a video years ago talking about balancing on one leg in point shoes. Uh, it is kind of old. It was not very organized. I did not have a plan going into it. I just kind of like spat out a tutorial as quickly as I could before going to work. So it's a little bit rushed and like scatterbrained. And I think I told you to buy wrist weights, which I still totally encourage you to try out. Wrist weights can be a great tool to help you find your balance. But we're gonna talk about a few other things today too. So before I get into the specifics, like specific body parts, specific placement corrections and stuff like that, I want to talk a little bit about proprioception. Of course, I did not prepare for this video, I did not look up the definition of proprioception, but I think the point that I'm trying to make is it's not just your body, it's also your brain. You have to kind of strengthen the brain-body connection you have to kind of train your vestibular system, all that anatomy in your inner ears that tells you where you are in space. One of the ways to strengthen that is to actually practice balancing with your eyes closed. Yeah, <laughs> and it's harder than it sounds. So this is an exercise that physical therapists actually love to give, especially after you've recovered from a surgery and you're trying to build back that mind-body relationship with a limb that may have been injured or just not as strong for a long time. So I can show you right now. This is my left leg, my good leg. I can hold this balance with my eyes closed and you know, I'm fine. Like a little bit of weeble wobbling, but like my brain and my left leg are on good terms. They, fine. Now watch what happens when I switch, right? The right leg, bad leg. Well, the leg is okay, it's the ankle. And closing the eyes. I'm struggling a lot more. You can see a lot more weeble wobbles in this ankle. And I already feel like I'm gonna all over. <laughs> so that is one thing that you can do to start improving your balance. And you don't even necessarily have to start out doing it on one leg or in passe or in any like crazy position. You can even just practice in first position on in releve at the bar. Like try to let go of the bar and just close your eyes and you'll see how how, how difficult it is, but you can improve it if you actually just like practice doing this with your eyes closed for like a few minutes every day, like you will get a stronger vestibular brain body proprioception and that will help you. We rely so much on our eyes to tell us where we are in space and we rely on the mirrors to tell us where we are in space, but what happens when you go on stage or what happens when you go somewhere where you don't have these mirrors? It's a little bit disorienting, right? So if you can practice this a little bit every day with your eyes closed, you'll actually have a little bit of an advantage. So as you may have guessed, having strong ankles and strong calves are pretty uh, more than necessary. What's the word? Required. It's a requirement. Because you have to be able to kind of lock your ankle in place. You have to be able to kind of like stack it vertically over the ball of your foot. Because if you're like, if you're like my busted ankle with the torn ligament, if you're always like teetering on the precipice of balance and off balance, and, and you can't just like get that secure feeling right on top of the ball of your foot, 
you know, your, your weight is going to be kind of like skewed back into the heel. You're going to have all this extra, all this extra wiggle room and wobble room. Like you want to eliminate that movement by stacking it right on top, having it nice and straight and like direct. Like you've secured it. It's only in one spot. It can't go anywhere else. Like on this ankle, I, I literally can't, I can't. The ligament is torn permanently and nothing will repair it. Nobody will do surgery on me. So of course, doing all your releves at the bar, ouch. So of course, doing all your plies and releves at the bar is a great place to start. Strengthening those intrinsic muscles that I talked about in my last video explaining what clawing and knuckling is That's a great way to strengthen your feet. There are other little toys and gadgets you can play with Of course, everybody loves a nice foam block. This is great because you can go even farther down and like Get some extra strengthening in there They also make the big kid toys the bosu ball which can be scary at first, so you have to be very careful. Also great for trying to eliminate the weeble wobbles. So unfortunately, we can't just pop on releve and expect the ankle to do all the work. We also have to constantly lift and rotate the knee while we are balancing. This is another one of those things that will eliminate the weeble wobbles. If you are constantly lifting and putting tension throughout the joints in your body, there, there's just gonna be like too much energy, almost like pulling them or suspending them so that you can't weeble wobble. If you imagine the limbs and the joints in your body as like this elastic band, you want like all this energy always going up and out. So if you're really like lifting those muscles and really like stretching, you can't, you can't weeble wobble this. But if you're being weak and lazy, so how do we do this in our knees? So I've demonstrated this in other videos. This is a lazy knee. How can you tell? It's, it's soft. These muscles are soft. They're like hanging over the kneecap because they're not working. But when you engage, you engage and also act like you're turning out from up here. You see how, just, just imagining that I'm gonna turn out my legs without even touching the feet. Just imagine that you're gonna turn out from up here. Look what happens. You see that? This automatically engages and lifts and lengthens. And that's what we want. Because if we're trying to balance on a lazy knee, it, it can like wobble all over the place, you know? And like, we want to eliminate wobbles. So in the standing knee, because we're turning out and trying to press down into the standing leg and engage the butt, I, I almost imagine that that this part of my leg is becoming shorter. Like I wanna pinch this part of my knee together right here and kind of lengthen and lift up the inner part of my knee. This will also activate your sartorius muscle, which is one of the most like important turnout muscles. It's an S-shaped muscle, like sartorius. It's an s shape. It starts on the inside of the knee and it goes up to the outside of the the butt muscle hip somewhere around here. So if you can like imagine that happening in your balance, like that's gonna be such a big help. So moving up, now we get into the hips and the butt. You know I love to talk about the butt. Butt is everything. So I think we all kind of know by now that we wanna keep the hips even and we want to keep them flat and lifted. So I've talked about this before. I've talked about imagining that your hips are the headlights of a car. 
So that means, you know, cars can't twist and bend unless they've been in a bad accident. So that means you can't do this, you can't lift one side, you can't lean one side, you can't pitch one side back or one side forward. This is something that has to stay even. And I think one of the things that makes this easier is giving yourself energy right here, like you're lifting up out of your hip bones. Because if you're like sitting and like sitting in your hip bone, first of all, you start to make an unflattering shape. We never want to be like small or short or slouchy in ballet. It's always about like up and long. So if you can like lift yourself out of your own hips, it's going to release pressure and release tension in here. And then it really just feels like all you're doing is lifting your knee. It becomes so much lighter when you give yourself that extra bit of help. And of course, it would not be a salty sugar plum video if I did not talk about the butt. So the butt is always doing the, the rotating and it's almost like, I don't know how to explain this without making it weird, but it's almost like the bottom of your butt cheeks want to kiss. <laughs> And by doing that, they're also kind of coming forward through the inside. Like if you could grab your own butt cheeks and bring them forward this way, out here, that will also lock things in place that will help you feel very lifted right here that will automatically eliminate the possibility of you doing this, of you doing this in your balance. It's just like, it's just so like sucked up through a straw and like solid and right there, right under you. Like you grab your own butt cheeks and get them under your ribs. When we talk about using the butt in ballet for anything and everything, it's not just squeezing cheeks together, right? It's not just clapping the butt cheeks together. It's about rotating them and getting them under you. It's squeezing, but it's squeezing around in a continuous circle. Always, always. <laughs> and that is going to be very helpful in your balance also. It's not just the butt of the standing leg, it is also the butt of the upper leg, passe leg, gesture leg, whatever it is that's going on. They're both, trying to keep this engagement and this connection the whole time. And that's gonna keep you on it, on top of the leg. That's it, there's no way around it. Butt is everything. <laughs> okay, I think I can put my skirt back on now. It has cats on it. Now for some upper body stuff. So just as we were talking about having flat hips and like a flat contained butt, you also want to keep your ribs flat. So that means we're never rounding or splaying the rib cage out. And that also means we don't like contract and like hunch inwards. Because again, that is just giving us space to wobble. That is allowing movement in these like unsteady, open, not engaged positions. So I tend to imagine my ribs and my hips are kind of like fused together. They're like the spine of a book. That's something that one of my teachers says all the time. She says like a book. So like the spine of the book, the four corners of the spine of a book, you know, I guess your, your pages or, or your covers are out here, but this part is like the spine of a book and it's flat and it moves together as one unit. So this helps when you're balancing and this also helps anytime you're turning. So 
pretty much no matter what I'm doing, this is all just like one solid, like a board, like a board of wood, like a two by four, like a book cover, you know? And then going up to the shoulders, Catherine Morgan's video actually gave a pretty good tip that I never thought about before. Obviously, your shoulders are down whenever you're balancing, and obviously you want to kind of press down a little bit more on the standing side because that reinforces the idea of all your weight being over the balancing leg instead of like, you know, out wherever the other leg is. She gave a little tip, and I haven't tried it yet, but she said wherever the back leg is, take the shoulder of the back leg slightly forward, just a little bit. And that makes sense because, like, let's say we're balancing in some other, like, wonky position, like, attitude or arabesque. Like, the body naturally wants to follow the leg. The body naturally wants to, like, twist and fall back towards the back leg. So if you wanted to do a passe front, then according to Miss Catherine Morgan, the standing leg shoulder should come forward slightly. Oh yeah, yeah, there you go. And then the arms, which I talk about a lot in pretty much all of my videos everywhere. I am a firm believer that arms should never be too high because when your arms are too high, you lose the ability to engage with these back muscles. So your first position usually right across from the belly button and lower arms allows you to really feel your lats. And you can kind of like lock your shoulder in place. So even if you have to change your arm position in a balance, you're never like losing the side of your torso. The general rule is you should be able to look up with your eyeballs and see your fingertips. If you can't see your fingertips, then your arms are probably too far back. And I know that this is awkward, but you still have to keep the elbow like engaged. The same way you lift your elbow when you're supporting your arm, you have to keep that feeling, even when your arm is above your head. Because traditionally, if you're looking at a dancer from the side, you should be able to see their nose and then their elbow. You don't want to be covering your face with your elbow. So even though the fingertips are here, you still have to engage that muscle and you're going to feel it all the way in here too. And again, that is another example of you keeping tension and keeping like a lengthening, engaged feeling throughout all your muscles and your, all your body, all your joints. And that is going to kind of suspend your balance. To me, that is most obvious in like an arabesque balance. Like, I'm just kind of imagining that somebody has attached strings to all my limbs and is really like pulling them, stretching them in all different directions. So with that tension and that engagement, it's like there's no space in your joints for wobbles and wiggles. It's like I showed you with the TheraBand. It's like, it's like you're drawing a bow with like a bow and arrow. You know, there's all this tension. So it's like you're really being pulled and stretched in all these directions, you can't, you can't fall, you can't. There's no, there's no opportunity for it. And then last but not least, the head and the neck. For some reason, it helps me to imagine that my head is almost detached from my body, almost like it's, it's lifting up and out of my shoulders. I know a lot of the times we're told to think of our shoulders going down, press your shoulders down, but then we can start, you know, like getting a shorter neck when we think about down too much. So instead of thinking of my shoulders and everything like pressing down up here, I imagine that like I can lift my own head 
out of my shoulders and then my neck becomes very long and very loose and very free and that will also help you when you start spotting in your turns to have a very free loose neck and I dare say your head is something that is often overlooked when we talk about balance but it really is a big huge contributing factor because your head is heavy I forget what the average head weighs. It's like eight pounds or something. So you have to feel like everything is on top of that standing leg, including your head. If I imagine my head over the ball of my foot or like my nose over my toes, that helps so much. Like pay attention to where your head is. If you're like, looking down or looking up and falling back, that's gonna make a huge difference. Like really think about where your head is. Balance is this weird combination of engaging, stretching, but also stacking and structuring over one tiny little point, the ball of your foot. So I hope these tips helped. I hope maybe they helped you think about balance in a different way that you haven't thought about before. And maybe it will help improve a little bit. Maybe give you, give you a little something extra. So thank you so much for watching. Stay salty, everybody.